today we're going to be showing you how to make your own uh, rocket engine igniter, a homemade version, as opposed to what you would normally buy from either Estes or uh, Apogee Rockets. And to make this uh, engine igniter, what we have are two pieces of hookup wire. This is 22 gauge stranded wire, one red, one black. They're about 20 feet long. We have a 9 volt battery snap cap, two alligator clips, a push button switch. This is a momentary switch, so the contacts are only closed when you push on the button. A 9 volt battery. And we're also going to show you how to make a safety key for your ignition system using an audio plug in an audio jack. The plug is a mono um, jack and the plug is also a mono jack. So the first step in making the, this igniter is to make a set of twisted pairs using the hookup wire and that we will show you next. Okay we're here with Albin on the left and Bobby on the right and in this next segment, we are going to show you how to make the twisted pair. Alvin? All right, everyone. So uh, to start off by uh, twisting these two wires together, which you've already cut to size, uh, what you want to do is the first thing you want to take a hand drill, take the two wires, put them right next to each other like that. And then what you want to do is you want to insert this about I'd say about an inch and a half or an inch of length into the drill chuck. So I'm going to loosen it here. Stick it in. And actually, I can't stick this in anymore because I can. Uh, I noticed I hit the, the back, so I'm not going to try to stick it in anymore. So tighten that. So with this part, you want to tighten it so that the wire doesn't actually come off. You don't want to tighten it too much because you might actually break the wire. Um, so you may have to try this a few times, trial and error, just to get a feel, but I've done this many times so I know how much you need to tighten it. Uh, so once you think it's about right, what you want to do is, so Bobby is going to stick a finger between these two wires here and make sure he separates them as he moves back. And I'm just holding the drill at this point. So just make sure you pull that back so there are no kinks. All right, now Bobby wants to twist each wire around his index fingers. So take the black wire, twist it around your index finger once or twice. It's good enough. Take the red wire, twist it around your index finger. Um, and you can see right now that both wires are separated. Um, so now what Bobby wants to do is open up his hands about three feet. Um, that's good enough. And I'm about to start twisting. <clears throat> so now, this is the most important part because as I twist, this angle here between the two wires is going to change if Bobby keeps his hands at, uh, three feet apart. So he actually has to maintain that angle by closing his hands as this twisted pair gets closer and closer to him. And, and you'll notice once I start doing it. You'll also notice he's going to close his uh, hands. Um, and this is really important because you won't get a uniform twist per inch once um, you're done. So he has to actually maintain a constant angle and do it as, as uh, best he can. It doesn't have to be very precise. So I'm about to start twisting at full power. And you can notice he's closing his fingers. So let me put his fingers over there. You can take a look, the wire is really close to his fingers, so he kept pretty straight and tight. Uh, and I'm going to keep going a little more here. It's slower and slower, so I have to keep going until that twisted pair gets as close to his fingers as possible. Um, and I've done this many times, so I can tell if this uh, is enough twist per inch, but when I finish, uh, you'll actually take a look at uh, how, how many twists there are. 
deeper range, but I'm going to keep going now until that twisted pair gets close to his fingers, and he, he has to maintain that constant angle. So, actually, I think the angle should be a little smaller than that. Yep. Don't drop the wire. Only drop the wire when I say drop. Okay? So, I'm going to hold the wire. I'm going to loosen the drill chuck. This is where it actually helps if you have another person here holding this. I'm still holding on to the wire pretty tight. Now, Bobby is going to release the wire from his fingers and keep it tight. And tell me when you're ready. Ready. So on the count of three, we're going to drop it. And that's really important. Because if you don't drop it at the same time, it's going to get all twisted up and it'll be useless. So ready? One, two, three, drop. Do that. So it'll naturally untwist a little bit, that's fine. But now, if we pick this up, take a look at how well this behaves. See that? Then you can take a look at um, how many twists per inch you might get. Um, and it's pretty uniform throughout. So. That's how you make a twisted pair. <laughs>
electrical components. Just unwind this a little bit and give me a little wire to work with. And remember the other electrical components here are the battery cap, a push button switch, and again using as a safety key an audio jack, audio plug pair. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder the battery clip to the black lead of the twisted pair. Again I'm going to remove a little bit of insulation, twist the strands together. And what I'm going to do here is take a piece of something called shrink tubing, heat shrink tubing. And the heat shrink tubing will be used eventually to insulate the junction that I'm about to make. I'm going to slide that onto the wire first. It's important to remember to put it on the wire before you solder the wires. And then I'm going to line these wires up so that they're parallel to each other and actually touching. And I'm going to go ahead and put a dab of solder on that joint. And it only takes a second. By the way, this is a 40 watt soldering iron set on about 750 degrees. And then once the joint cools and hardens, I slide the heat shrink tubing up over the joint. And normally you would use a heat gun to shrink the tubing, but for, if you're just doing a couple, I use the shank of the soldering iron and just run it along the heat shrink tubing to shrink the tubing down. And ki kids really love this part because to them it's almost magical that the tubing shrinks and conforms to the size of the wire. Now on the other end of the, on the other wire, the red wire of the twisted pair, again I'm going to strip some insulation off. Twist the strands. And if you look closely at the audio jack, you'll see that it has two terminals and the terminals have holes in them. So I'm going to put the, uh, I'm, I'm first going to get another piece of heat shrink actually and slide it onto the red wire and then I'm going to slide the stranded wire through the holes on one terminal and then just hook it around like so and Put the jack in our twisted, in our uh, helping hands, and go ahead and add a dab of solder. Let that cool for a second, a few seconds. Then I'm going to slide the heat shrink tubing up over the terminal. And the heat shrink tubing in this case not only insulates the electrical connection, but it also helps to give a little bit of mechanical strength to that solder connection. And then shrink the tubing right down. And you see it conforms very nicely. Now to the other end of the terminal, I'm going to take a short piece of connecting wire, hookup wire, again strip the insulation off of both ends, and twist the ends together.
I'm going to take this piece of jumper wire, put it through the other hole on the other terminal, and likewise solder it on. Now attached to the other end of this jumper wire is going to be the push button switch. It also has two terminals and hopefully you can see that each terminal has a hole in it. This time I'm going to put the heat shrink on, tubing on before I solder the connection. Switching to yellow because I ran out of white. Again, hook the wire through the hole and around the hole on the terminal. And give that a spot of solder. And then the other terminal accepts the red wire from the battery snap cap. And then slide the heat shrink up. On both terminals. and heat it up to shrink it. The final step is to actually make the safety key using this audio plug. I'm going to take the plug apart and again you'll see two terminals. Each one has a hole in it and what we need to do is to short these terminals out. We need to take a piece of wire Again, using a piece of hookup wire. And essentially, I will solder the wire to those two terminals. So, strip some insulation off once again. Twist the strands together. And then you need to form a loop. like so. Get my helping hand back here. And I'm going to pass one wire through the hole on one terminal. And the other wire through the hole on the other terminal. You see on this terminal it actually has an area where you can crimp the wire down in a couple of jaws, so I'm going to go ahead and crimp it. And then I'm just going to apply a dab of solder to each of the terminals. Flip it around. There we go. And let that cool off for a second. And then slip the protective sleeve back over the terminals. And screw the cap back on. Now, it's a nice idea to have this safety key 
you don't need it because your safety could simply be not having a battery connected when you are, are hooking the alligator clips up to a rocket motor igniter. But I like to have the safety key feature because what I normally do is I'll take a piece of surveyor's tape and attach it to the wire loop and when it's inserted into the circuit I can see from even 15 feet away where when I'm standing at the rocket whether or not the key is inserted and you never want to attach your alligator clips to a rocket igniter that's sitting in a motor when the key is inserted. So this way I know that just by a quick visual look, even from 15 feet away, 20 feet away, that the, the ig ignition system is disabled because it doesn't have the key inserted. Now the ignition system is enabled and to launch the rocket you simply push the button. And that's how you make your own rocket ignition system and you've just saved yourself about $30 uh, from, from buying uh, one of the commercial systems. The components for this system cost probably a total of uh, maybe $5 tops. So a nice alternative to, to spending money on a commercial system. And that's it. We're done.